Welcome to the power supply test notes. So first thing to go over is what size fuse should we be using? Well, back in the video where I discussed vacuum tube rectifier design, a lot of the manufacturers say that the tube influx uh, current needs to be sustained for 0.2 seconds, 200 milliseconds. And the reason for that is that when you're dealing with a transformer like a fan or a vacuum tube rectifier as we have, the normal operating current is a tenth of the influx current. In other words, if we're needing one amp for continuous normal operating current, as soon as the unit is, is switched on, it will draw at least ten times that, roughly. So for, for a moment, for about 0.2 seconds, it has to withstand 10 amps. That's a lot. So a quick blow fuse will not do that. It will, it, the eutectic point where it just immediately goes from solid to liquid and breaks uh, will be instantaneous. So we want something that's like a slow blow. It can actually take the several amps for at least 0.2 seconds. So the, the size of the fuse is dependent on this. So there's three windings. 700 volts at 0.11 amps, 5 volts at 2 amps, and 6.3 volts at 4 amps. That gives us a total of 112 volt amps divided by 120 volts, which is the wall uh, voltage for where I live. That gives us about 0.93 amps or I need a one amp slow blow fuse for this project that will suffice. Now then, this is the power circuit. First note, we're dealing with a 5Y3GT vacuum tube rectifier. It is an indirect heated vacuum tube rectifier. Therefore, we're going to take the voltage for B plus off of pin 8. I'll show you the difference between direct heated and indirect heated vacuum tube here in, in another slide. So what that means is we cannot connect the 5 volt center tap for the 5 volt winding to ground. Because as you'll notice in the schematic, the B plus pin 8, the red line, connects to the yellow line which goes to one half of the winding for the 5 volt winding and then the center tap will send it right to ground. So basically what would happen is you're connecting your 700 volt center tap or 300 or half that 350 volts is going directly to ground in which case you're creating a short and you'll notice a flash or a blue arc show up in the vacuum tube rectifier if you had the correct size fuse in there it should just break and everything will be okay after that just don't do that very often so what's the difference between a direct and indirect heated vacuum tube rectifier on the left is a 5R4 direct heated rectifier, and on the right is a 5AR4. They're not interchangeable, almost. You can use an indirect heated vacuum tube in place of a direct heated vacuum tube, but you can't put a direct heated vacuum tube in place of an indirect vacuum tube. I'll show that in the next slide. But in an indirect heated vacuum tube, there is a cathode between the plate and the heater. The plate impresses voltage onto the cathode. The cathode then is internally connected to pin 8 and the right-hand side of the, direct, of the heating element. And it comes out pin 8, and that's where we're going to pick up the B+. That's one option. On the left, the 5R4 does not have a cathode. So therefore, the, the plate impose and press their high voltage on the filament and the filament then needs a center tap in order to pull off the high voltage to 350 volts off of the heater element and that is done through the center tap of the transformer. So the reason for having a, a direct heated winding that has the 5 volt center tap is for older vintage amps and radios which have that center tap 5 volt winding. You can, again, you can put an indirect heated uh, vacuum tube in there, but that's why that is there. 
Uh, so pin 8 is where we're going to pull off the high voltage. So in this next slide, I'm showing both the indirect and direct heated vacuum tube. The top right of your screen shows it directly heated. What's in the circuit is the indirect heated. So if you were not to pull your B plus off the of pin 8, off an indirect heated vacuum tube, it's fine. You can pull it off the center tap. Why would you do that? Well, in the, in the that is to minimize or negate the 5 volts that is in, it's also part of the 350 volts, which is on the pin 8. So if I go back to the original schematic, the, the downfall is if we have pin 8, it has both the 350 volts and it also has 5 volts AC that's mixed in there. It's not a problem because we're going to take it to the next filter stage. And for a guitar amp, that's perfectly fine. We're going to, the filtering to be adequate enough to get rid of the 5 volts AC, which is also part of the rectified voltage off of pin 8. If you are doing radio work or uh, stereo work and you really want to minimize any uh, residual voltage to begin with, this is the configuration you would go to. You would just take pin 8 to the transformer, pull the B plus off the center tap, you can put uh, ca capacitors on either line of the 5 volts in order to again get rid of radio frequency interference and then you have no B plus superimposed with the 5 volts AC. It cleans it up considerably. Again for this work it's not terribly important, but it's something to be that you need to know. So you have two options, pin 8 for B+, plus or center tap to B+, plus, but don't connect center tap to ground if you're pulling B+, plus off of pin 8. So that will short it out. So in the test, step 1, we always plug in the unit. Again, we want to test the on-off switch, make sure it's, it's, it's not faulty. Quality sometimes you'll find a bum switch and you need to make sure that it works properly. Now then, the te first, this first test phase treats all the voltage under no load. So we test the filament winding, make sure we're getting 6.3 volts there. We test the 5 volt winding, make sure that we're getting 5 volts there. It'll float up just a little bit and there should be 350 volts on the high voltage winding. In our case, it measured 368. Bonus for us. And we test that first. There's no point t uh, testing B plus 1 and B plus 2 because there's no rectifier in the circuit yet. But once we put that in, then we're going to get the square root of 2 times the measured VAC of the high volt winding. So if it was, 100, if it was 350 volts AC times the square root of 2, we're going to get 495 volts uh, peak voltage at B plus 1 and B plus 2. There's essentially no current, so it's all peak voltage at this point. Once we put them under load, we put in the 7591 and the two 12AX7s, they'll create load on the circuit. There will be current. The 80 milliamps flowing through these resistors, and that will bring those voltages down to the 350 and 263 volts uh, that we have already previously designed for this circuit. But without load, they will float up. So you should expect a no load peak voltage somewhere between 495 and 500 volts. And that is, this sums up the, the test notes for the power supply test. I hope you find this useful.